Let's take a close look at the tool option icons for placing patterns. First, I'm going to draw a couple of circles. And I'm going to copy this one. There will do nicely. Go back to zero for the hatching itself and start the hatch area tool. Now we're working with flood and similar to the tools you used previously, turn dynamic area locate on. Now when you take your cursor into the drawing and into the boundaries of the two circles, you'll see the results of the flood and where the hatch will be placed. There, there, and there. So if we left click here, our hatch will be placed on that side. Now we've been through that before, so that should not be difficult for you. I'll undo that. Now the same thing occurs, of course, with the three Boolean options. There's Union. Both will be hatched as one object. There's the intersection. We would expect the centerpiece to be hatched, and it is. And here's the difference. Now again, it will depend in this case on which way we select these two circles. I'll undo that. Now I'll select them in this direction, and we'll get different results. And then next we should look at the last two options. This one is points. So placing points on the screen gives us the boundary in which the hatch will be drawn. When I'm ready, I right click and the hatch is drawn. Now in this case, we see a boundary which was created by the points we placed. That's because associative pattern is on. If we turn that off and repeat the process, more points, right click, we get the hatch, but no boundary. So this is one of the few times when a hatch can be placed without a boundary element. What's actually happened, of course, is that there was a boundary, but once the hatch is in place, it will disappear, and you're left with simply the hatch pattern. Now, this can be very useful. For example, let me show you a different drawing. This is a relatively complex residential drawing, and I want to highlight this area here, which is all one level. The area above is a different level. The area to the left is a different level. So I want to highlight this level with a hatch. I don't want the boundary to remain in place because that adds to the geometry of this drawing. So I will hatch with the points method and associative pattern off. So now my boundary can go from here to here to here to here. That's my boundary. And I right click. And I've drawn a hatch pattern without a boundary covering that area. So there are some circumstances where that option works very well. Let's get back to the original drawing. And let's have a look at the last option on the toolbox, which is fence. Now right now there's no fence in place, so this option is grayed out. So let's place a fence. Simple fence. Back to the tool. Now I can use the fence option and just data point in the middle of the fence somewhere. And right click. Get rid of the fence. And again, we have a hatch without an associated boundary. Again, if you wanted an associated boundary, then turn the option on and the fence boundary becomes the associated boundary.